Love and Truth, 2 John 1, New King James Version. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all those who have known the truth. Truth and love are inseparable. That is the Apostle John's message. Take note that John addressed his letter to the elect lady, who was most likely a real person. Without a doubt, John had a special brotherly affection for this lady and her children. She came from a devout Christian family that was clearly involved in the local church. In the midst of an ungodly, pagan society, there was a dedicated Christian home. In verses 1 through 3, John used the word truth four times, separated by love on both ends. The foundation of our faith is truth. Your word is truth, Jesus said. Furthermore, truth is the foundation of love. It gives love teeth, making love possible and real. The bottom line is that a misunderstanding of love can lead a person astray. John 17:17, 17, 17, New King James Version. Sanctify them by your truth, your word is truth. 2 John 2, New King James Version. Because of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever. Furthermore, John stated that truth abides in the believer. Meno is a Greek verb that means to remain or to stay. According to John, truth abides in the believer. It calls the believer's mind and heart home. But only when truth is balanced by love, love for God and love for others. Matthew 22, 37-40, New King James Version. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Part 2. Truth and love must be practiced. 2 John 4-6 through New King James Version I rejoiced greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth, as we received commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, that as you have heard from the beginning, you shall walk in it. John progresses from proclaiming love and truth in tandem to practicing love and truth in tandem. He explains how this occurs. First and foremost, Christians do it by continuing to love God. The image of walking is frequently used in the Bible to assess the health of one's faith. The Apostle Paul, for example, exhorted newly baptized believers to get busy walking. Romans 6, 4, New King James Version. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Paul went on to say that believers should not walk in craftiness, but rather by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, New King James Version. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Christians are to walk in the Spirit in order to avoid fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16, New King James Version. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. As a Lord's prisoner, Paul came to the conclusion that all believers must walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Ephesians 4, 1, New King James Version. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Walking expresses believers' love for their Savior as well as the way of life they pursue as each new day begins. In fact, walking according to the Lord's commandments entails a completely devoted love for one another. 2 John 5, New King James Version and now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. The greatest commandment on which Jesus insisted is love, and it is the hinge on which the entire law hangs. 
Matthew 22, 37 through 40, New King James Version. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. It's strange that believers need to be encouraged to love one another. Nonetheless, the Lord Jesus used love for one another as the yardstick by which the world judges the church's genuine faith. John 13, 35, New King James Version By this, all who will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Christ made love for one another the standard by which the world could determine whether or not we are his followers. This brings us to John's second way for Christians to practice truth and love in tandem, by continuing to obey God. This is love, says John. If Jesus taught us anything, it is that love is not an illusion. Love can be perverted, twisted, misguided, and inaccurate. But love is genuine. Romans 5, 8, New King James Version But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Indeed, if love isn't real, neither is God, because God is love. 1 John 4, 8, New King James Version He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And according to John, our love for God is expressed in our obedience to Him and keeping His commandments. 1 John 5, 3, New King James Version For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. Part 3, Truth and Love May Be Perverted 2 John 7-9, New King James Version for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves so that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a full reward. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. We previously proposed that truth and love are linked by a single hinge. And apart from their foundational rootedness in Scripture, both are vulnerable to perversion. John is open about the many deceivers who have entered the world. To be honest, John was not interested in making friends or influencing others with his words. Eternal souls were on the line. The Gnostics denied that Jesus appeared in human flesh. He was nothing more than a ghostly apparition to them. Deceivers attempted to mislead obedient, but sometimes weak or gullible Christians. While a believer cannot become an atheist, a weak believer can be drawn into a deceptive vacuum devoid of sound doctrine. As a result, those who fall for the deception will eventually regret it, either in this life or when they stand before God. Note John's term is inappropriate. It means to go beyond, implying a violation of legal boundaries. It's similar to hunters coming across a sign in the woods that specifically says, no trespassing, but ignoring the warning, crossing the boundary, and continuing to hunt anyway. How do the deceivers work? John informs us, they probably made their rounds when the church was in session for worship. Weak believers have a bad habit of avoiding gatherings of the saints. Hebrews 10, 25, New King James Version Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. As a result, weak believers would invite the false teachers into their homes, listening to their smooth presentations and potentially opening themselves up to deception. Do not receive him into your house or greet him, John says emphatically. This is not meant to be harsh. John was not telling Christians to be cruel, but rather to avoid being taken advantage of by deceivers. Because they were hungry, the false teachers did not show up. Instead, they showed up with a single goal in mind, to deceive.
In a way, love and truth are analogous to sodium and chlorine. If we preach love without truth, we end up with universalism, which is a terrible mistake. Proclaiming truth apart from love, on the other hand, can be offensive and at times poisonous. However, the beauty of the New Testament Gospel is preserved when truth and love are proclaimed and combined in Christian people and churches. Part 1. Truth and Love Must Be Proclaimed 